Hello, everyone, and welcome to ATL Falcons UK. Uh, this week, me and Cal are joined by Greg and Mark, who are obviously regulars, and the one and only Jeff Reinbold, who has been unbelievable for, uh, well, all of the NFL fans that are on Twitter at the moment in time. So thank you for coming on, Jeff. It's my pleasure, guys. It's always good to talk ball with, especially with the Atlanta Falcons fans, because I know it's been a trying year for you guys. <laughs> It really has. It really has. We've, it's a roller coaster to say the least. But uh, you never know. Going into going into the Saints game, we're, we'll see where we're at. Uh, Greg, Mark, how are you feeling about this game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reassuring. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think I, I think for me, it's kind of like pressure's pressure's lifted now. It's a kind of I don't. I, 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 re, I really don't think. You know the the heavens are going to align and we're going to hit playoffs. So 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 let's yeah. let's face that. I think it's for me it's kind of a case of you know um, let's see what Raheem can do because the pressure is off. So uh, yeah, and that's got to be a good thing, right? We've got to try and find some positivity in it. I agree. I agree. As, as I said at the start, if we split with the Saints and the Bucks, I would have been happy with that, regardless of how the rest of the season went. So there's definitely space for improvement there. You know what, fellas? Yeah. I've been I've been through this couple of those kind of seasons, and uh, there's not going to be any lack of urgency on the part of the Falcons because no. the reality of it is the players are all playing for their jobs and the coaches are coaching for their jobs. And I tell you what, one thing that I've noticed and I've watched them really closely because Jeff Ulbrich, uh, who is now the defensive coordinator after Raheem went to become the head coach, yeah, he is a University of Hawaii guy and a, and a guy that I've known and had had fun interviewing him at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Jeff has done an amazing job with that defense. Their entire personality has changed since he took over as a defensive coordinator. So I'm really Absolutely. happy. I'm happy for him that he got an opportunity and that it's worked out well. And I hope they I hope they can close the season the way they did against the Raiders last week. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, we've improved from. Uh, something like 26 defensively, and then if you base it from when then when the change happened, we're up to eight at the moment, I think, which is a massive, massive improvement on the defensive yeah. side of the pitch. And of course, our production offensively has never been terrible, but even that started to improve a little bit. Well, that's what happens when you've got a defense that are looking after you and meaning that the offense isn't constantly on the field and vice versa. So, yeah. That's a great. That's, that's a great point. That's what we call complementary football, where one side yeah. plays to help the other side. And and early in the year, you didn't see that out of the Falcons. I, and it was interesting, um, you know, that they they almost seemed to play the first half of the season or the first quarter of the season as if it was the offense on one side and the defense yeah. on the other side. Now you really see them start to play as a football team, and that's that's a positive sign going forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Greg, what what are you looking for this weekend to change from when we played them last? Uh, the big thing is, can we keep Matt Ryan from hitting the turf, you know, 78 <laughs> times? Uh, I read a thing this morning. Uh, Caleb McGarry seems to have a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde situation going up against Cam Jordan. Uh, last year when they upset him, no sacks allowed, uh, followed up with four allowed. Uh, I think he was responsible for three last week, uh, two weeks ago. So if he can just keep Cam off of Matt, that's going to be a massive improvement. And also Julio's back for this game. And Dirk Cutter yeah. seems to be a heck of a lot more confident when uh, Julio's out there, which who wouldn't be. But, you know, uh, mainly it's a, for my money, we've got a few more years of Matt Ryan. This, this game be damned. I don't want the man hurt. <laughs> no. So, no, no. You know, we, I, I want to if, – if we can keep him alive for a few more seasons, we're going to be competitive. So that's, yeah. that's the most important thing to me. You know what I think too is that when you break down individual players, you got to see you got to see it from the coaching standpoint. And one of Dirk's challenges, one of the Dirk's jobs, is to make sure that the protection fits what they're trying to get done, and that the mismatches don't overwhelm you. Because yeah. you know Cameron Jordan's going to he's he's going to beat everybody. I don't care who you're talking oh, yeah. about. The best the best in the league he's going to beat on occasion. And so. You've got to make sure that that you slide the protection to him, that you chip him, that you do all the things that a coach can do to help yeah. his player. And and again, I think that's the that's the sign of really really good coaching. And I'm anxious to watch that matchup that you're talking about because that's a great observation, and yeah. that's a, a great point. 
because Matt Ryan is still one of the elite quarterbacks in the National Football League. And, and you know, I, I know Julio's on the downswing now, but they've got weapons. And, yeah. you know, if, if you're a prospective head coach, you, you got to look at the, at the Falcons' job as one of the better jobs available because, you know, Houston doesn't have any draft picks. Chicago doesn't have a quarterback. No. You know, again, you've got some talent in Atlanta and you got an owner that's committed to winning. Yeah. The, for, for me, the only the only point that isn't attractive about the Falcons at the moment in time is the cap space. But if you're confident enough with the roster that we've got, which we, like you said, we have unbelievable players, then someone could step in and make that their own in terms of style of play and in terms of the draft picks that we will use this season. Because you'd imagine that we will take a, quite a few defensive picks as we'll have no safeties in <coughs> physically by the end of this season. But, yeah, I think... Uh, it, Danny, it's really- to that point as well, I think, and I, and, and I think Jeff I kind of touched on it earlier on. I, I, I don't, I don't think we should be in, a, in in any hurry because I think that we've got a roster at the moment that needs a smart GM to come in and make those decisions about that cap space and be a bit clever about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and for me, you know, I think it's it, it's very much a case of, you know. I don't. I think the next guy who comes in should one hundred percent, one hundred percent be something for the future. We need. To, we, it, it, I know it's not a full rebuild. It's not because we've, we've <coughs> got quite a decent foundation. But yeah. it just feels to me like this is a. This is a. It doesn't feel like it at the moment. But we're heading into a positive time where you know. I mean, let's face it. You know, 10, 15 years ago, Kansas City weren't. The the, the 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 household name they are now, no. and we need to we need to start to to work towards that, and we need to do it by smart uh, smarter front office and smart uh, coaching. Well, yes. it's, it's going to be an interesting off season for everybody because the cap is going to shrink, drop, yeah. you know, and yeah. and how everybody handles that, whatever shrinkage there is, how everybody handles that is going to be really important to see. And I think yeah. you know that's why the first. And again, when when uh, when they got rid of Dan and they got rid of Tom, I thought that you know that that seemed like a major step for yeah. during the season. But really, it was really a brilliant thing that that Arthur did because they've had the longest time to look and search yeah. the, and really do really really sort out where they want to go with the GM because I to mm-hmm. me the GM is the most important hire because he's going to set the he's going to set the groundwork and the framework for the rest of the franchise he's directly underneath the owner and so when you look at the power structure I, I tell you Lewis Riddick is the guy fellas that that I yeah. hope Arthur will really spend some time and really vet yeah. very yes. closely because he's a guy that played in the league now that doesn't mean much but it does mean that he understands the players. He, yeah. he understands talent. He's very, very, very smart. And I think he, he has he has a background in management. I think Lewis Riddick would be an outstanding hire. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. That said, like, I know I was also on the uh, get rid of Dimitrov train pretty early on, but I was, <laughs> like, I guess a couple weeks removed. I I'm kind of feeling a little mad about it now because like you know he whiffed really hard on some draft picks he whiffed really hard on some free agent picks but he also brought in the most winning you know era that we've had i mean matt ryan julio uh bringing alex mack in on the free agency all of these guys are because of him and honestly calvin too he seemed uh, from everything i read he wanted calvin way before any of us expected to be drafting a wide receiver so you know I think it was his time to go, but at the same time, I'm trying to quell my, uh, you know, fuck Thomas <laughs> hey, yeah, at this point. Yeah, i tell you what, brother, there's nobody that hasn't whiffed. I'm going to tell you, take a look right. at that that guy with the hood on, with the cutoff sleeves up, up north of you. He yeah. whiffed on, he's whiffed on plenty of them. So, yeah. you know, you can't, I, I think you have to look at the entire body of work. And Tom will get another job, but there is, a, I, I agree with the point that you made about Everybody has a shelf life and every organization, you know, that's what makes what New England's done so incredible. But typically, and, and John Madden, John Madden said it, that it's five to eight years is about as long as you got. And that's in one yeah. in one yeah. spot. And that's about what Dimitrov has had. Mm-hmm. 
and I think I think like you know it, it just it, it came to an end didn't it and and, it, and it's not the end that any of us would have wanted you know especially midway during the season but no. I think I think we've we've still got to kind of give credit to to, to Mr Blank he, he, he did he, he really did give them a shot do you know what I mean he gave, he gave them a shot to turn it around but you, you you I think we all had now have to kind of look to right okay we're gonna we're gonna park it we've got to park it and I think things like this when we play the Saints are are kind of like it's what we need because you know we we do technically have a better record in this fixture just yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's ever depleting but you know this is the kind of week where like you know like like coach said coaches are are, are, are really coaching for their jobs so yeah. I think it's um I, I just I think it's an exciting time I I, I, I refuse to get to get too bogged down in it yeah just out of I, curiosity I so. oh go on Cal <laughs> no I think I agree like it's it's summer when they both got sacked off the five games it's summer what we all sort of wanted to we know I knew it was coming um, and I think from now on it is like there's going to be a new GM coming in there's going to be a new coach coming in so it is exciting times we know the cap space is that, it is, that is what it is but I yeah. think it's exciting times for us I think for the rest of the season yeah. I said to Greg the other day just enjoy the rest of the season and obviously we've got the Saints this weekend and what's you can, you just enjoy just enjoy the rest of it and then see what happens and then into the, at least it'll be like another exciting off season with incomings and outgoings again yeah just one thing I was going to ask, Coach, and someone one... in the comments as well. Um, what do you think of Raheem's chances of taking the role on a permanent basis? Oh, boy. I tell you, that's a, that's really an interesting question because I know there are a lot of people that are lobbying for him to get the job. I think being, you know, let's put all the cards on the table. Number one, Raheem's a minority hire, so he has an advantage because the, the league is just going, going to tell guys that they're going to have to hire minorities. What The minority hiring is embarrassing in the league across the board and and so for him you know that's every candidate you look at the you know what they bring and you know that's 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 a positive and yeah. you know especially in a city like atlanta now yeah. on top of it what i've seen out of raheem compared to the raheem that i knew in tampa bay was he's he's matured a great deal uh, i think yeah. he is much more ready to have an opportunity now you know it, it really it very similar it happened to me way too early too you know I, I got a head job in pro football in my 30s and i wasn't ready for it you think you're ready for it but you don't know until you go sit in that corner office because you don't even know how you don't even know the questions until you sit in that office and so i think that raheem now has matured i think he's been around he's been through other organizations he's seen other ways of doing it yeah. and my impressions there are that he's much more ready i think the way, the way that the Falcons have played, the way they're trending right now, is a positive for him. I think these next five games, I believe it is, that, that we have yeah. to play will be the acid test. And this is one that's probably as big a test as any because this is your natural rival. This is the kingpin in the division. That You're going to, you know, Mr. Blank and everybody's going to measure your performance against the saints because they are the you know they are the standard in the league so you yeah. play well and beat the saints that's got to go a long way towards you know yeah, having an opportunity to take the job full time it, it'll go a long way from a from higher up but it'll go an even further way with the fans because yeah. that's all we want if we said yeah. if we could put it one win one loss we would have taken that at the start of the season so we'll definitely take it in a struggling season when we thought we were going to achieve much more yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not completely sold on Raheem yet. But if I was to, to to just get one answer off you, Coach, who 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 would you choose right now if you could? Well, I, I think you got to look at the candidate pool that's out there, right? And again, um, if you say that Raheem is not going to be involved in, and I think he should, but I, in the final, let's say five. But let's say if he wasn't going to be in the final five, you know, Eric Bieniemy is a guy that you're going to have to look at very closely. Yeah. Um, I really think that the thing that they need more than anything else is they need somebody who understands the big picture because what too often happens is you, you organizations go from, well, let's have a defensive guy because we had an offensive guy last and yeah. then when that guy gets fired, they go to an offensive guy and they go, they just run from pillar to post. 
So I think a guy with with great leadership skills, I think a guy that has experience, I think a guy that uh, understands that it's not one side of the ball that wins, it's three sides of the football that wins. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, a guy like Jim Caldwell is a guy I think that deserves a second chance because you look at what he, there's been one coach in the history of the Lions, one in the Super Bowl era that left Detroit with a winning record. He took the Lions to the playoffs twice. Now, he's not a sexy pick in terms of name, but he, he's the kind of guy that has the, that has the you know, gravity, that has the, the, the strength about him, I think, that that organization really needs. He's, he's a, out of the Tony Dungy school. He never gets too high, never gets too low. He, you yeah. know, he's, that's the kind of thing I think is a positive for him. Uh, you look around the other, if you, you know, Wink Martindale's a guy that's going to get in interviews. Uh, there's David Shaw at Stanford, I think, is an outstanding football coach and has proven at a very difficult place to win in college football that he can win way beyond what he should. Everybody talks about Lincoln Riley and no, I, I've watched there. I've watched, and I'm going to just say this. I've watched Oklahoma play. They're not a well-coached football team. They're a very talented football team, but they're not a well-coached football team. And so – if you're if you got better talent than everybody in your league yeah. and you're not dominating your league, then I don't know what I don't know how you think that's going to transfer into the National Football League where everybody's good. And yeah. somehow you're going to do better. Um, you know, I, I just I think it's really going to come down to when they get them in the room and whoever the GM is, is going to have to have a comfort zone comfort factor with that guy they've got to really be on the same page and they've got to understand each other and that doesn't mean they got to be friends but it means they've got to be willing to shut the door and have the lively discussions that you need to have without yeah. guys getting their egos hurt so that the, the number one things is moving the atlanta falcons forward i think that's really critical absolutely i, I like you said then we have a lot of talent on our roster, so you want someone that's capable of coming in and coaching that, but we've also got a lot of potential. So for me, you need a coach that's willing to spend the time to develop the players that aren't quite near the maximum because the, I don't want all these players that we have to, to get stagnant and not really improve from the floor because then you end up with loads of dead cap space. And well, I, I, you're, I, that's a, That is a fantastic point because it's not just drafting them, right? Yeah. It's drafting them and then develop, developing them yeah. because you look at players and you say, you grade a player. I know when I was in Kansas City, we did it this way. You looked at a player and, and it, it was a very simple evaluation tool and it, and it really was very, very good. You gave a player an arrow up if he's an ascending player, a, yeah. an arrow flat if he's a plateaued player, and an arrow down if he's a descending player. Well, the key is to move your move your ascending and plateaued players along the line, right? You want to get your, your young kids up to where they're playing at their maximal level. And then you can keep a few descending players, a guy like Julio, because yeah. they bring more to you than just their performance on the field. It, and, you know, so that's part of the whole process of developing a football team. You know, it, it, one of the reasons why the Redskins have never won and one of the reasons why the Cowboys have struggled for the last 25 years is those two owners think it's like collecting football cards and it ain't that way you know yeah. there's a lot there's a lot <clears throat> to this absolutely I, I think your point about julio is a brilliant one because when you look at yeah julio is struggling with injuries he's struggling with form a little bit probably linked to the injuries but then look at the improvement of calvin ridley I wouldn't like to credit Julio completely with Calvin's development, but he's definitely going to assist him because yeah. Calvin in most other teams is a number one wide receiver and, and that's got to be from, well, training with the absolute best in the league. So it, yeah. you definitely need them men around. And, and that's, that's the way we've been rolling for years. It's not just no. it's not just training with him. It's sitting in the meeting room with him. It's putting it, you know, putting, the, you know, when when you get a great young player like Ridley, you attach him to a veteran yeah. like Julio because Julio knows what it means to be a pro. There's a whole lot. There's a guys. There's an, there's a huge difference between getting paid and being a pro. Yeah. Right. Uh, OBJ gets paid, but he ain't a pro. Right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm just telling you that. And, and Julio's a pro. He's yeah. a pro's pro. Right. 
And so you want your you want a few of those guys around, even if they're past their due date as players, because they're going to help show the young ones the way. Yeah. Yeah. The same way that Roddy showed Julio into the league, man. Like Julio knows exactly, exactly what it's like to be drafted as a supremely talented wide receiver, but get led in by somebody who's already got the experience. That's we we've been supremely blessed at wide receiver for a long time yeah. in that fashion. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's why now what I think one of the th needs for the Falcons is to find a young quarterback that they like and let him sit behind Matt for a couple years and learn how to prepare. Learn. Yeah. I mean, a college player, guys, has no – I don't care where he went to school. Clemson, Michigan, Notre Dame, it don't matter. They have no idea, especially at quarterback, about yeah. how much work it is and how, the enormity of the job. And so if you have a chance to sit behind a pro's pro like Matt Ryan, you're going to learn what it means. And that's why Tua is blessed in, in Miami yeah. because yeah. he's got a guy like Ryan Patrick. You know? Fellas, I got to run, man. It's been a blast. Let's do it again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for Thanks, coming Coach. Up. All right. Thank you guys take, take yeah. care. What, maybe one of these days I'll bring my buddy Jerry Glanville on the old Falcons head coach and we'll have some fun talking about the dirty birds awesome. back in the day. Awesome. That would be awesome. Definitely get you on board soon. <laughs> and good luck to uh, Leeds play today, don't we? So good luck to your That's team. That's right. Hey, dirty till I'm dead, baby. Dirty <laughs> nation. <laughs> See you soon, mate. Thank All you right, very much, Coach. Coach. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was awesome. Um, well, guys, I'll be honest with you. It's really, really nice to be told that you have good points by a coach. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll, um, we'll carry on with the show and cover a few more little topics. Uh, yeah. while, while don't look at Mark. He's buzzing. Uh, uh, well, do you know what it is? I was like a little bit like in awe because I, I, I do really, really rate the geezer. And, um, but find out he's a Leeds fan, man. Like it's just—it's <laughs> like it's like you've you've waited in all day for your new PS5 to arrive, and then the postman kicks your dog. <laughs> <laughs> that, I like that one. I'll take that one. I'll take yeah, that. Right. Well, it was better than the original one. I thought, of, but but I, I can't say that out loud. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, <clears throat> Like we said, it, it was awesome to get him on board and just get yeah. some points. And and actually, it was probably better covering generic Falcons as opposed to just the game. And then we can yeah. get into the game specifically more now because there was much better takes than I would have dropped on most things. So <laughs> I think I, I think he's 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 one of those guys as well who like he just he loves the game. So like like we're sitting here, you know, wanting to. Do the same so that, and he's kind of objective about it, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because he doesn't like necessarily have great affiliations with one or the other. So, no. like, it's it's hard. I, I I think it's probably hard to have that conversation because actually he just wants to talk about the sport rather than you know um what you know rather than us talking about here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Can I say really fast? I love an objective source who's willing to say that Lincoln Riley is not God's gift of football. My God! <laughs> if that was one of you that said that, I would have screamed hot take at the top of my lungs. But I didn't think it was appropriate at the time because on the, when we've been doing this show and we've had how many guests on ten or twelve different guests over the last yeah. couple of months, that name has been what must have been mentioned a hundred times. Yeah, yeah. And and it's uh -huh. it's refreshing to find out that somebody's not completely sold on someone. But you get the you get the method in the madness if he doesn't think that the particularly well coached and they're all based on individual talent yeah, yeah. That's not going to cater for us we've not we're not blessed with a full roster of talent no. we're blessed with no a no one of is. Roster of full talent and then right. half a roster of potential and half well a quarter of a roster of on your bike I've, I've, I've been paying more attention to, kind of to, to college football this year actually to be fair and um i, I like i was I was relatively kind of big on 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 Lincoln Riley a, a good couple of weeks ago. Um, it has kind of quelled a little bit in me, to be fair. Yeah. But um, to hear from a coach that he ain't a good coach is no. is, is, is kind of like, well, well okay, that's that, that's 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 pretty on the line. <laughs> yeah, Re really fast. I'm gonna toss it out there. Uh, there are a ton of people. Cal and I heard it last time we did this. 
that people are missing Sarkeesian because he's killing it at Alabama. Yeah. Dude, Alabama has the cream of the crop when it comes to athleticism in college yeah. football. They yeah. have five – they have literally five Mack trucks as an offensive lineman uh, for, for an offensive line. They have – they don't have a great quarterback, but they have the – they basically – the, those top 100 guys coming out of college, they almost get to pick who they want yeah. and they just walk away with them. It's so easy comparatively to be a superstar offensive coordinator on Alabama staff under Nick Saban yeah. than it is to walk into a pro league where, like Coach just said, everybody's good. <laughs> you know, you yeah. can't just yeah, out, really. out athlete everybody. So, like, that's that's the one thing I will say. Yeah, like Sark had better numbers than Dirk, and I think we're all just on that board of like, you know, get the hell out of town. Yeah, but Sark's not our answer, guys. Like he's well, no, no, and I think like, I, I, like like I've, I've felt that this week is that it kind of almost <clears throat> it's almost like I mean I, I'm not on the oh Sark would well, would at least be better because that's that it, it, it's kind of a non-argument really for me. Do you know what I mean? Like it's 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 one of those where. We're waiting for something to happen, and we're so frustrated with what we've got that we kind of go, "Wouldn't it be? It, it, it would even be better if we had him." And I think it's just like talking about Ross. Do you know? What I mean? yeah. you're, just, you're just moaning for the sake of moaning. It's it's what Falcon fans do, man. We, we're all <laughs> we're we are super we are Super Bowl we are Super Bowl, and then the second the bottom drops out for half a second, it's fuck this. Drop Matt Ryan. Yeah, you know, can we yeah. can we get Mike Smith back? Like it's. Just, Dude, no. Like, it's not how it works. It's like we go from one extreme to the other, don't we? I think that's our problem. Why not? You've seen the meme with the pendulum that just shoots back and forth like this? That's yeah. us. <laughs> In between. I think, going into, I think going into this game as well, I think after they would have been watching absolute shitloads of videos from the last two weeks ago, especially with Hill running in, was it two touchdowns that he ran in and he's not. I don't think he's through a touchdown, has he yet? Um, so I think that's going to be yeah, the only I suppose, pass. I suppose, Carl, if, if if they don't have to, if we let, if, if if we let them, then, they, then that, yeah, that's how you, know, like, you can. You, you uh, I, I was I was really bummed after that game, and, and like I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> like, sitting sitting here going, you know, they've just got to be better, you know, yeah. and, and it, even if we get beat, but we don't get. Fucking mullered like we got last like we got last time. Then do you know what it is I can go to bed and I'm go, oh well, yeah, meh. Like yeah, didn't expect to win, so at least we gave it a go. That's what I want. That, that's all I'm after. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm not high maintenance, I'm not high maintenance, guys. Do you know what I mean? Just just play the fucking game. I mean, they've only they've only conceded one one passing touchdown in the last three weeks now, I think. So even to get a couple of them on the board would be a fucking bonus in my opinion because Yeah, but but again, you know, it's it's coaching in it. So you, you know that horrible little twat with his visor <laughs> on is gonna be sitting there going, Well, we, it's all right. I don't have to fuck, I don't have to get noodles to fucking throw the ball. I just, yeah. I can just fucking run it in because they ain't gonna stop us. And that's yeah. that's the that's the frustration for me. That's where I want to see the fight this week. Yeah, yeah, I'll dude, I'd love to see him punch John Payton. Like, I would, <laughs> I would, I would love to see him just run straight off the field and deck him. <laughs> and that, and that, and I, I, yeah, legend status forever after that, aren't you? I don't matter. care. I don't care who it is. If Dirk Cutter punched him, <laughs> I would love Dirk all of a sudden. <laughs> no. If Dirk punches him, he can stay forever. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't be that nice. It's uh, really, it's really not worth it, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will. I will say because, like, uh, you know, it was because I, I tried not to talk about it last last time I was on. It was the most nauseating thing to listen to those commentators talk about Taysom Hill. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. was it, every they had the graphics built up like he was Tom Brady, and like it was so confusing. The only pass that he threw over twenty yards was underthrown by 20 yards. And the only reason that Debo wasn't standing on top of it is because they shoved him away and didn't get the call. Yeah. So like, he's, he's not this amazing, he's not this amazing talent at quarterback. And frankly, he's got just as punchable of a face as Sean Payton does. I don't know what it is about it, but man, like I would love to deck that thirty year old. I'm just. <laughs> this has gone from pure analogy and hot take to to just hate week. And yeah, like, yeah, can yeah, we yeah. just? Can we? This is what you wanted last week. I just didn't have it in me. <laughs> <laughs> Bit more notice I mean, this week. I said the other week about just, just leaving one on him, just like the first one of the game. Just leave him 
a late tackle, give him a fifteen yard, just just leave one on him. And I thought, yeah. just just fuck do it this week. Just yeah, absolutely but, yeah, but, do it. And they, and they got him. I mean, they, they did throw him to the turf in the first drive. Yeah. And that helped. And yeah. We'll do we'll do the first one, but then we'll keep fucking doing them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Um, so yeah, I mean I think uh, look, you know, the the performance against the Raiders last week, and you know, I've got a couple of pals who are Raiders fans and and, and they're kind of like you know, they're losing the will to fucking live week on week, whether Derek Carr is going to turn up and be, you know, Derek Carr or fucking Pat Mahomes. Um, and that, that a game like that should give them at least a little bit of a deal to go, do you know what it is, boys? You know, we we can play. But I mean, I know the Raiders, to be fair, you know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll play both sides of the coin. The Raiders are absolutely, like, ruined with injuries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, Look, you know, a good performance is a good performance, right? And that's what we that's what we have to do this week. Yeah. And you know, like it, we can we we can do the hate week thing, and it's great, and I I, I love it. But you know, I think the like like coach said earlier on, right? You know, this is this is the acid test, right? If you lose yeah. to the Saints twice, I'm sorry, Raheem, mate, but you know, it it it's not looking good for you, bro. And, no. and and we have to. Yeah, I think we I think we all have to be honest about this now. I'd agree. I'd agree. Uh, sorry, guys, we can, go on, go on I'm just going to say, I'll just jump on the comments dead quick a second. Yeah. Nothing's relevant, but then we'll bounce back. A uh, bit of context for American people out there and that aren't in the UK. Uh, Leeds are a soccer team or a football team that Jeff supports, and they've been absolutely shite for years, but they're doing all right now. So that's but it used to be one of the dirtiest, most horrible teams Hated. in the history of soccer. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody fucking hates them. Uh, yeah, everyone still hates yeah. them, don't they? Yeah, exactly. yeah. trash. Uh, thank you, Falcons Nation. <laughs> I have seen your tweet just then, so yeah, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely hook up sometime as well, and we need to do a collab. Uh, y- we actually have a space now. If you want to come on now, feel free to come on. We've got twenty minutes, so I can send you a link. Just reply in the comments if you're free now, and we'll get you on. Um. Going back to what Greg you put out yesterday, and I co- I put a tweet out about. It. I don't know if you've seen it, Matt. Did you? Uh, oh, yeah. Was it fl- flur at offensive and then keeping? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fleur, keeping flur, keep, bringing flur in a um, offensive, and then but keeping Raheem as head coach. <clears throat> Mark Lafleur, the uh, the current passing coordinator for San Fran, uh, he's been with Shanahan I think since Cleveland, so it was right before the Falcons run. Uh, yeah, it basically I don't know I, I can't remember who uh, who put that thought out there, and I wish I could you know shout him out right now, but I, I just I'm drawing a blank. But I, I threw it to you guys just as a curious thing. Uh, basically, they were saying say we t- say we take out the Saints, say we split with the Bucks, say you know we end with a decently respectable record, given an zero and five start. Uh, what are the thoughts about keeping Raheem, keeping Jeff Ulbrich, dropping Dirt Cutter, and picking up uh, picking up Lafleur? Uh, basically, as a uh, you know, as that stupid connection to the Shanahan coaching tree that Dan Quinn has wanted for so long. Uh, I, I don't. I honestly, if we're gonna keep Raheem, I don't hate it because we're not gonna get like a B enemy as our offensive coordinator. We're not gonna bring in a high name because he's already got that position, and also he doesn't call plays. No, yeah, but well, I was about to say that, but also there's that I'm not against it, but what what I'm my, my concern is yeah. that trust me, I got uh, plenty. It, it's <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I could go with it if if that situation plays out. Um, my concern is um, that Raheem may keep Dirk, mm. and and I suppose what I'm erring towards is. Look, if we just start again, there's no chance he's going to be kept on. So, like, yeah. like I, I suppose oh, I'm with you. Like, I would, I would rather that happens, and we, and we are shite for the remaining, <laughs> um, for the remaining games of the season, than kind of continuing with mediocrity next season. Still be sitting here, sort of nine and seven, you know, eight and eight next year, and going, well, we haven't really. We're still we're still having the same conversations. We're still, you know, and, and I think I think that's my that's my concern. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that, oh, I'm, I'm entirely the same way. 
I think Sorry, if Raheem does, if Raheem does stay, it is if he bring if he keeps mm. Cotton. I think that is the main issue. Like he's, it's the main uh, issue for us, but we don't know if it's the main issue for him. No, you'd that's like what I mean. You'd, yeah, you'd, you'd you'd like to think that Raheem's sitting there going, "What am I going to do with this Tillich?" <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> you know they, they could be they could be best mates for all we know. So you know that's that's I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm concerned. See, okay, so that comment that just popped up, right? Why do we think that? If there is any head coach is going to get promoted that's going to drop drop somebody for no damn reason at all other than he doesn't like him, it's going to be Raheem. Raheem's not scared of anybody in this league. No. So, like, you know, the fact that he can look at Tack McKinley like a massive man and go, we need to have a man-to-man -man talk. It doesn't happen. You're gone. Yeah. You know, like, I, 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 think, I think Raheem's got the backbone to say, I want this team run differently. Uh, uh, and I don't, I don't, and I've heard rumors that they're fight, that there's infighting. I don't, I don't, I, I know I'm pretty much the only one to say because I just read some off tweet, but I don't, I don't think they see eye to eye. And Dirk Cutter had his time in the league. Yeah, like, he really, he really did. There was a time when he was an offensive genius. That time is long before he came back this time. Yeah. So I mean, it's you know, it for me, it's the complete lack of making adjustments. When the Saints are hitting Matt a second and a half after he snaps the ball, why are we running routes that take five seconds to develop? It makes yeah. absolutely no sense. And I, I can't, for the life of me, figure out how anybody would hire him again. But, no, I am entirely with you. If we drop Raheem, if we drop Jep, you know Dirk Cutter's going out the door too. And, you know, I just, I, I guess I just appreciate the attitude that Raheem has brought in since taking yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I like make care just because I'm, I'm not on him to keep him right now. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, you're not downing I, him by I, any means. I, yeah. I just don't think I've seen enough. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm not against him staying because I think that actually when I listen to him in press conferences, because I used to, I, like, I didn't even, I, I gave up fucking listening to Dan Quinn in press conferences, quite frankly, and I, I like the guy, but. If you, you know, listen to one, you've listened to every single one. It's, oh, I'm sure, pissed, yeah, I'm yeah. mad as hell, we're going to fix it. No, you're not. Yeah. Like. <laughs> we're pissed off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure you so are. We're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not getting paid. Mate, like at, at one point, uh, 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 me and one of my mates were doing sweepstakes, right? So it was going to be which which sentence it was going to be. It was going to be ticked off, pissed off, angry, um, or you know, um, when mad, mad like, as hell. You know, mad as hell. It's the same shit. So like, yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's Raheem's <laughs> certainly better to listen to. I like him. I like his personality. It does feel yeah. like he's obviously got in a few people's faces. Um, and like I say, I'm not, I'm, I'm not against him. I just, yeah, I, it's just, I, I, I get your hesitation, man. <laughs> I, I get it by a mile. Coming back to yeah. start again, just start yeah. again, draw, drawing board, put like, like just, you know. I think yeah, let's just, I think it'd be exciting if, it, if we do start completely again. I think it's the more the exciting point of what's going to happen in yeah. January, February. Whatever time, uh, but Absolutely. I think time will. I think starting again has got a longer, a, a longer time frame on it. I think, I, I think we yeah. start again with, with, you know, there's one thing that we're not good at as far as <clears throat> is having patience. Um, yeah. but like, you know, if, if if things start to turn and things at least feel better, you know, like it, it's it, right now. It's kind of like the game starts to turn. We're all the same. We're all like, oh well, there we go again. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and just kind of not having that feeling like we could make a comeback, feeling like you know we could make the stop with two minutes left on the clock. Yeah. You know, like just even having that would be so much more rewarding supporting this team than yeah. you know, like it's like the Grand Theft Auto meme, isn't it? Oh shit, yeah, we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I think you know it's 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 more exciting to go. Let's start enjoying it a bit more now. Absolutely. I can I can I drop in one thing though? Just a revolutionary idea. Instead of go having on. to make a stop at the two minute mark, maybe we hold on to the damn ball for a few <laughs> extra. <laughs> it's it's a, that that's the thing that I loved about Matt Ryan in like oh eight oh nine ten eleven twelve when he was just getting in the league and getting going. Yeah, those moments where it's like get one first down, you've won the game. Those were almost automatic because mm. Matt was not. Matt could just do it. Now it's 
Matt's going to take a sack here. Matt's going to throw an incompletion. And it's not even his fault. It's just what no, he's got working no, with. No. And honestly, I'll, I'll throw this weird hot take out. The defense would not have been so poor if the offense could have held up their end of the bargain several times this year, yeah. especially. I've been, mate, I've been saying that since week one. I, I completely agree with you. And that's on deck. I'm sorry, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's, 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 really a, <clears throat> it's really an offensive coaching you know, weakness that we really, really have. And, yep. you know, um, no amount of no amount of smoke screens and no amount of, oh, well, you know, we're going to work on this and we're going to work on that. No, you just, you're not, you're, you're not running an offense like you would yeah. see other other good teams do, you know. And yep. it's, it's, we, just, we just make bad fucking decisions. Without yeah, it's like if, if we just held onto the ball for 30 more seconds in that Cowboys game, we would have never had the stupid onside kick debacle. We would have, you know, it's like you think about these things and it's, I know you can what if everything, but the offense just, it seems like Dirt Cutter does really well when things are going well. And the second something quakes, we're done. Yeah. Could you imagine and it's just, the, could you hold imagine on. Bollocks on him having to sit there in that Raiders game and go, I'm going to bring Shove on. <laughs> <laughs> Like, the first time this season that we've held on to a lead and we've not been stressed in the fourth quarter. Like, yeah. it, it, it was almost like a kind of Twilight Zone moment. I was like, so, right, hang on. I've, I've, I must have dropped yeah. a, a tab of acid in my cornflakes. This isn't stressful <laughs> at all. Absolutely. But, I wonder how many Falcons fans were looking at it like, ooh, hey, it's fourth quarter. Could we still? Could we still? I bet there's still the odd few that was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I saw all zeros on the clock, and I was still a little on edge. <laughs> like, just... <laughs> I'm just going to bring the guest on like, to carry this on. Yeah, I was sitting there, kind of like the, like the, the you know, you know, like the hangover, uh, yeah. like the meme where all the maths is going. I was kind of like, well, if we give them the ball back three times, and then they go in and do two, and I was like, I was working out how the Raiders can come back in that fourth quarter. And I was like, Mark, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And I was like, I'm just, it, it's, it's ingrained in me. That 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 ninety nine percent chance of win or ninety nine point nine percent chance of win on ESPN is a kiss of death for the Falcons, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just so you're all aware, we've just been joined by s someone from Sports Live in the ATL. So thank you for jumping on for a little while with us. Yeah, of course. How you guys doing, man? Not Good, so man. Bad. How are you? <laughs> Good. Well, you can see I've been better. I got the mask on because I had an allergic reaction to my beard. So I'm under medication. So you don't want to see me looking like Shrek right now <laughs> with a puppy. But, but, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I just got to say, man, I've been following your channel you know, as much as I can the last couple of weeks. I love the fact that the Falcons have spread over over to, uh, to England. Uh, I do know throughout the years that there's been a lot, you know, games over, you know, in Wembley Stadium. I think the Falcons made a trip against the Detroit Lions. Um, I, I don't have much time today. I would love to uh, uh, collab with you guys at some point soon. I want you guys, if you can, check out my channel. I've been doing this uh, since 2009. I'm, I'm working on 3,000 subs. I've had a couple channels. Um, I've done some things with people on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Just wanted to show you all a little bit about what I'm about. I've, I've been a fan of the team since they wore these helmets right here. Right. Since they wore the red helmet. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm probably one of the most – I'm not going to say the most diehard fan because everybody says I'd have bought their team. But yeah. I hate the Saints more than anything in the world. I, I actually went to New Orleans in 2015. I saw the, the rivalry. On, in Bourbon Street, Dude, but we what lost. The but, hell? <laughs> hey, look, look, we lost, but but I still tore it up when I was there. Um, Rich, if you can, hey, when all you guys get a chance, uh, uh, Cal, ATL Falcons UK, Greg T, Mark, Danny, make sure you comment under a recent video of mine so I can find your channel. Uh, yeah, sure. I did a video recently of uh, of uh, Dan Quinn and Mike Smith. Uh, I got that inspired by. Um, by uh, Don Villa talking sports. You yeah. you guys want to check him out? He does podcasts here in Atlanta. Uh, to me, it's purely simple. The Falcons for years uh, have had defensive issues since the two thousands. They've wasted a lot of good coaches, a lot of good efforts uh, by yeah. winning teams. The Falcons probably should have at least two Super Bowls in the, in the year two thousand. The two thousands. Um, yeah. The reason why the Falcons continue to get laughed at is, is because they, they continue to do things to make it happen. And and this team is a really good team when they're playing together. 
just ask the Raiders, ask the Vikings, and the Falcons can beat the Saints without a doubt. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I, if anybody knows this rivalry, you don't really know who's going to win. Um, I don't expect the same effort as what happened two weeks ago. To me, the keys for Atlanta to win are, pu- are purely simple. Play on all sides of the ball. Coach has got to make the correct calls. Matt Ryan's got to be smarter sometimes. Uh, I think he takes too much of the blame uh, because he can't carry the team. Matt Ryan has done what he's what he can. If you see throughout his career in the playoffs, in the Super Bowl, in the NFC Championship game in 2012, this year, he's done what he's had to do to put this team in position to win. But when the defense starts collapsing and all the pressure's on Matt Ryan, then a lot of the fans want to blame him if he can't come through. Yeah, what can he do? He he did enough to get you to that point. Yeah, you know you got to at some point the defensive players are getting paid millions of dollars. Pretty simple. Do your job. I Do think, your I, job I, and get I, done. I, I think I think you're absolutely right, and I think I think it kind of it kind of goes back to <clears throat> what we were talking about earlier on um, when we were talking about Dimitrov, and, and and he he made some some really really bad like money calls in extremely games. bad. You could look at many of the players and I, and I talk about it in, in the video I just did yesterday with true and Duke Riley and uh, Pierre Jerry and um, uh, even Dante Fowler. I mean, that, that, that guy is complete basket case. He's, he, he's, he's horrible. Uh, Tack McKinley. Um, you could, you could just keep naming players. Look, with all due respect yeah. to Julio and Matt, I think they overpaid those guys. You know, you can't you can't put your your whole stock and barrel in a couple players. Uh, the only good thing is that some of these players that we've got are starting to produce. And I think that if the Falcons continue this upswing, that uh, the Falcons, even though a lot of Falcon fans don't want Raheem Morris back, why would you change something that's going to work? But yeah, um, the key, personally speaking, for the Saints is is strictly pressure the quarterback. For God's sakes, we all know what happens when you pressure quarterbacks. You pressure yeah. Taysom Hill. You're going to give yourself a chance to win. And the O-line who got insulted two weeks ago, a lot of the fans made it seem like that that was going on all year. This is probably the one of the best years that the O-line has done against Matt Ryan. It just happened to be against our worst opponent, our yeah. most hated rival, to get demolished. So, you know, I, I look, I expect Atlanta to win. I'm going to be streaming the game tomorrow. I do a lot of streams on my channel. Yeah. Uh, I, I do a lot of shout promotions for other Falcon fans. I, I've been on ESPN. Um, I've worked with some of the top sports people on here. So if you want, if you want your show, I mean, you guys are doing great. I can help you. Just, yeah. just check out my channel, and I'll promote you. And uh, let's have some fun with this. And I, and I hope to see some of y'all tomorrow. Uh, are y'all going to be doing a show? What What are you going to be doing on your channel uh, tomorrow? Uh, I'm not too sure tomorrow. Actually, we usually do a little bit of a like pre-game preview um literally like 10 15 minutes before but other than that we'll probably not do too much on youtube tomorrow to be honest with you so okay okay well like i said if you could you can check out my stream some of my people pop in and i'll promote your channel because what i usually do as long as the, the video makers say it's okay uh yeah. i always show clips of, of the person's channel so oh, if right, all okay. you guys are here if all you guys do things on your collective channels yeah comment below please under my channel so i could find you and then I'll promote you out with some other people. But, hey, it's great to see Falcon fans uh, over in the U.K. Um, I know Benny Hill and Life of Brian and Faulty Towers and and, and all that stuff. And Mr. Bean, love it. Uh, I, all sports, I love the comedy back then. I, I love the comedy shows. Uh, one of my favorite movies was filmed in, U- in the U.K. with uh, American Werewolf in London. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I always love it when they said, Stay away from the moors. That was the <laughs> creepiest movie I've seen. But guys, thank you very much for having me on. I gotta go. Awesome. I know I talk a lot. But that's what I do. But you know, I, I got you, man. Just check my channel. Go Falcons. Awesome. All right, guys. Come on, guys. guys. Thank you. you too. Thanks, See you, man. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that was hot. Right. Okay. We actually have. Oh my God. I, I gotta go say on, it really on. fast. How dare you say we overpaid Matt Ryan, man? <laughs> and who, when you get all right, look, it, it sucks, right? It sucks when you have to drop 150, 160 mil on a on a player. It does. The alternative is to have uh, 
Sam Darnold at our quarterback or uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick or, you know, no, <laughs> I couldn't get a word in there. But hey, no. Craig, don't, don't say that about Sam Darnold, man. He's in a big fire. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Right, no, we have I, another guest lined up sat waiting, so I'm going to add someone else and you guys carry on talking and do what you're doing. I don't don't mind at all. All right. Hello, Maggie. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm doing great. I am from, I'm um, the owner and operator of Atlanta Falcons Nation. Um, you've already been kind of convers- uh, talking with Big Low. My connection is absolutely shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've been watching you fellas. I've been trying to message you guys to kind of, I know your guys are busy. So I was like, <laughs> let me jump, let me say something while we have you live. Uh, oh. But we are, you know, I have been sharing your, you know, your content. I'm trying to get yeah. more people to watch you guys. Um, Cause what you're doing is awesome. It's similar to what we do. Um, it just it's it's fun it's fun exactly. it's it's amazing to see you know international fans that are just as passionate as us yeah. um i appreciate you guys just just loving the falcons but as far as that matt ryan being overpaid though <laughs> I knew that get him, Maggie. Get him. I mean, I mean, <laughs> this man is the mvp of the Atlanta falcons okay yeah. um without matt ryan this man hasn't missed much of anything um he comes out there each and every week and um, I mean, of course, when you don't have the right offensive coordinators and the right coaching staff, yeah. I mean, we kind of in the group with um, Raheem Morris. We'll see if he gets that coaching job, but he's doing a heck of a job right about now. That defense yeah. are, is improving. Um, the offense, it looks like um, Julio Jones, you know, everybody, you know, um, Dante Fowler and uh, Todd Gurley, they're limited, but yeah. they did practice this Friday. so. Mm-hmm. Maggie, who do you want as coach? Hmm? Who, who do, do I want? want? Do you want yeah. him or who do you want? I mean, you know what? I'm. I mean, Raheem has a great chance to um, contend for that um, yeah. spot. I can definitely say that. But um, as far as I don't know, it's like it's kind of hard to determine. I really want a good, 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 great defensive coach, though. I do because even though our offense was kind of off a little bit. But when we get – when everybody is pretty healthy, yeah. that's not the problem. What yeah. it is is it's dirt cutter. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, after, you, after four want? quarter, who do I want? I who don't do – I, I can't say I'm not gonna make that prediction because we get excited about it and then they come over here and bum because that's what we thought what uh, Dan Quinn was right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. All I'm gonna say is I'm gonna listen to anybody that's got a press conference style backdrop. So exactly. <laughs> you know, I, this is just like a little something I found in a uh, department store. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, I, I like have it. to represent all the time. That's I'm just me. I've sat in front of books to make me look clever. <laughs> hey i love so that'll work <laughs> i love you guys though i would love we actually have a show um in a couple of hours actually where we do a pre-game type deal but it's like we're trying to get with your time so we can maybe do something together that would be awesome with big oh, low awesome. uh we're we're excited to have you guys unless even if we come on your show it really if we got to come up early, because you know it's very early for us. But I was gonna say, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm willing yeah. to make that look. I'm here, so uh, I, got, I got I got I got a nice 7:30 a.m. text from these guys this morning, and I'm like, get them up, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just K Styles, one of our um, panels on Atlanta Falcons Nation. He's hilarious. Please, if you haven't checked out Atlanta Falcons Nation, please do. Uh, we it. we we try to. Um, we want to highlight everyone. So I want to, you know, if you got a Facebook page, please send it to me um, on the Atlanta Falcons Nation um, Twitter. I will share. We already have a French fan base that we share on our Atlanta Falcons Nation um, right. page. Right. Uh, we would like to share you guys as well. So um, that's all. I mean, I don't want to hold you up. I know you guys was holding out for us for a couple of more minutes. I know you're about to disconnect and everything, but right. <laughs> let's do it. I love it. I just, I mean, what are your guys' names? So I can kind of, you know, I know a couple of your faces, but. I, I'm Danny. Okay. I'm Kelly. <laughs> I'm, I'm Mark, but um, my my Twitter username is um, another angry northerner because I'm a <laughs> angry man, but it's still early yet, so I'm not quite sure. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm just a token American. <laughs> so, right? You know what? I heard the accent. I was like, yeah, you don't sound okay. <laughs> hey, it's up in here. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, what do you guys, you know, lead into this game? Do you think this is a win? I know I probably caught the end of it, but do you think we win tomorrow? I'm, I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling a, a close game, but I'll take this as a win because I said at the start of the season that if we could split with the Saints, then I'd take that. So yeah, and we normally we'll do. At the moment, I'd definitely, I'd definitely take a win, but it won't. Again, it won't be easy, even though we're coming off the back of a great win. Correct. I still don't think it'll be an easy game. I think we'll it have is. a better. Um, I'm not to cut you off. I think we'll be better prepared this time, though, because we didn't know what the co- coaching be. situation was going on. Even though that does shouldn't matter who's the coach or not coach playing as a not I'm sorry quarterback I mean yeah whoever's the quarterback playing as a quarterback yeah so we <laughs> wasn't prepared for that one so Master I think Ray maybe we'll be quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Guys no. are crazy. Uh, <laughs> what I will say, uh, in all seriousness, is it is so 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 hard to beat a team twice in one season. Uh, this is yes. not college. This is you know this isn't like you know some guy that just got pulled out of high school. Yeah, uh, I always tend to, especially with a rivalry game. Uh, I grew up a UNC Chapel Hill fan, and the UNC Duke basketball game is one of the biggest things in the world. And I don't care if one if one team is undefeated and one team is completely defeated. That game is always tight, and they always yeah. beat the hell out of each other. So yeah, that's absolutely. I tend to lean more towards regressing to the mean. I think this is a win I, because, and also yeah. I, I don't think I can physically say the words. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to lose to these guys. We're, we're I not. I can't get it out. So no. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I always think we're going to win. Yeah, I go into the every week. I do injury reports and all that. I'd be like, yeah, we're going to win this one. It's just going to be the game. <laughs> I feel totally the same way until about three minutes after kickoff. And I'm like, oh, shit, it's all over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my, my kicker is right after the half. It was like, okay, what Falcons team are we going to see now? You know, because it's like we're doing great right now. God but let's forbid see we're up by 21. If we're up uh, by three touchdowns, it's over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he's like, you don't know what to predict. So let's just get that man out of here. Uh, maybe we'll have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, I've got any comments now. We're all good for the comments. But um, yeah, has anyone got any any hot takes or anything they want to drop about the game before we wrap up today, Joe? We've done nearly an hour already. So. Um. I, I don't know whether you class it as a hot take, but um, I I, I fancy. Uh, Julio to, to to come back and, and make a statement this week. Um, okay. I know he's. Uh, I, I I kind of do, we obviously we had Coach Jeff on earlier on and and, and and he and he said something about Julio being a down arrow and I'm I'm, I'm really I'm not convinced about that. It might just be me being a bit of a, 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 a role <laughs> Julio's player. always a down arrow. I, I think, <laughs> I think um, I think he's he's had a tough year, obviously with injuries and stuff. But I think if if there's kind of one player who can maybe try and grab this by the scruff of the neck, I think it's Julio. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Julio for, for at least two touchdowns. I will take that. I will take okay, that. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Todd Gurley's out. Yeah. Uh, um. No, he's uh, questionable. Yeah. Okay. He's on my fantasy team, and I've already pulled him from the lineup. Questionable. Line. Scared. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but. I would. Uh, I'm gonna weirdly say, if if they're smart, and if Ty Gurley can't go, Ito Smith pulls down at least one touchdown, if not two. Okay. All right. Because I like cause that. Because he, he really showed up last week, and yeah. like, God, it was so refreshing to see a running back that doesn't run three yards in and get smacked. I mean, he was actually yeah. making people miss. Yeah. So no, I I'd, I'd like to see Ito do something, man. Yeah. So, just to get your take on that, do you reckon? The play calling changes when Eto plays compared to when Gurley plays because Gurley always seems to end up running straight down the gut and hitting a brick wall within three yards, whereas Eto and Hill, to be fair to him, seem to go for the outside and find pockets of space that Gurley doesn't seem to be gifted. Which with. is so mind-boggling because Todd Gurley lives outside. Yeah, That's exactly. why you brought this man to Atlanta. Yeah. Why would you send him up? The, send Brian Hill up the gut. He's huge. Yeah. What, what are you doing? Like, I, I, yeah, it, it, I think you can literally watch Dirk Cutter's play calling change based on who's on the field. The minute Julio's on the field, he starts running more creative routes. He's yeah. not as scared. The minute Julio mm. gets hurt, it's just oh crap. Uh, run, yeah, what do we do? Three times, take a sack. Bye. Like you know, <laughs> it, it's I, I don't I don't get it. But no, he. It seems like whoever his backup running back is, he goes, oh, I can play with this one. 
I want to add to that. Um, I think that just the game plan. The game plan is get it to Julio. Get it to Julio. Then it's like when he's out, it's like they're scrambling. Like, what do we do next? <laughs> I'm just saying. I've won, I've won several Super Bowls on Madden, just throwing it to Julio. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you backing, Cal? Any players to stand out? Uh, I think Alucon will stand out again, and I think he'll come out with. Oh my god. One second, Man, that's gone off for some reason. Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah we still you. <laughs> oh, did y'all go on? Oh, yeah, it's just one for some reason. Um, oh, no. I think okay. Luke will stand out. I think he'll come out with what, yeah. um, even two sacks, maybe. I think we'll get four sacks in the game, and I think it'll be a big game um, for him, especially. And then, obviously, two every time will be. Well, we're well, obviously yeah, exactly. watching our touchdown, but I think he'll be. We'll probably still score quite a few three pointers again. It's a sad. He's it's right. a sad point that though, isn't it? Because it when you it. want him to do well, it's so sad because he shouldn't have to do anything really other than score of, like the extra point every now and again. But we're literally relying on him to keep us in games every. Well, we weren't last weekend, but the weekend well, it's, before. It's, it's, it, it's where we are, isn't it? And I think, uh, I think, uh, I, I have, I have seen a few people who kind of, kind of go, oh, you know, we shouldn't be relying on the kicker so much, blah blah blah. But, but yeah. you know, I kind of don't get on with that, right? Football's football, and points are points, right? And and you you win the game with what you've got, right? So, yeah. like, for example, um, sometimes, a lot of the time, we can't really trust our defense to stop things, right? But what we can exactly. do we can yeah. always rely on what we've got, which is a really, really consistent kick on. And yeah. I know it's not like I know shout out to him like, for a uh, Pro Bowl vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not it's not glitter ball football, but like it, if you ask if you ask Bill Belichick, right, who you know, I hate the Patriots, right? But you've got to give the man his due. He will do whatever needs to be done to get the W. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, yeah. Patriots, Patriots aren't known for highlight real football. They're, they're known for winning. And, yeah. You know, I, 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 I know where you're coming from, but I just think it's really nice to maybe not be a Chicago where you, you know, your kicker comes up and you're like, well, this could go north. <laughs> south. Triple north. Really do you know yeah. what I mean? So, <laughs> I think I, I think we've got to maybe take a step back from that and just start going. We really got a good kick out if we and and we need to get points on the board. So let's just get them on. Yeah, hey, and nobody saying. nobody has a problem when Justin Tucker is booting fifty five yarders from Indeed. home. Yeah, 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 so yeah. like you know, please, like we got we got a bright spot here, man. We got, we got it. We got a couple diamonds in the rough. Came from nowhere. Let's uh, let's ride this guy as long as he'll take us. I, think I have a um, hot take on defense, you guys. Go I think on. I'm gonna oh, go goodness. with defense. Oh goodness. <laughs> um, Mr. N um, NFC Defensive uh, Player of the Week, uh, Jacob. I think I'm curious to see what okay. develops from that player. I'm like, that's kind of been, you know, something to watch. So y'all pay yeah. attention to that player. I think that maybe we might see a little bit more, especially now he's getting a little shine and a little spotlight right about yeah. now. <laughs> Have you noticed that we've had those guys who – you see them like you see their name on the active roster, and you're like, Who? Who? And yes. then, like, it, and then a couple weeks players. later, it's like, Oh, shit, like, a couple of All right, let's do work. <laughs> like, yeah. it, honestly, Foye was kind of like that for us. We drafted him, it was like, Is he gonna do anything? And then all of a sudden, he's like outshining Debo. So, you know, oh, it, yeah. that's it, what it, I have against the coaching staff. They don't give other players a chance to, you know, give well, them chances. DQ didn't. Well, yeah, Raheem. well, yeah, Raheem is yes. So yeah. I'm gonna take that back. Yes, yeah. Raheem, I'm seeing the difference now. So DQ. Yeah. And and, yeah. and from what I can from what I can see, Dan Quinn was too busy trying to be friends with everybody. He mm -hmm. wanted to be that player's coach who you know, uh, like everybody's cool. Like if you mess up, it's all right, guys. I'll give you a hug. Have this shirt with this stupid ass slogan that I came up with this week, and you know, keep going. Whereas Raheem will go, no, you're done now. Yeah. Like tack bye. Like you know, so yeah. like I I respect it. Yeah, that's what we want though. We need someone that's going to come in and make bold calls straight away because they've got a lot of a lot of work to do with a roster that could pretty much deteriorate after this season because of cap space and everything. So they're going to have to be very black and white about everything. I want you. I don't want you. There's no there's no room for middle. Oh down, yeah, so. it, it needs to be just you know you need to cut it like yeah. no more holding hands and letting people you know get rid of people that's not producing. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't. Big the emotional doesn't stand anymore. Big 
<laughs> sorry, sorry. Did that, was that loud? Uh, that, yeah, that cough was a little bit. It was like a stage whisper. Whisper. We don't heard it. It's fine. <laughs> but no, I agree. That we need to lose our emotional attachment to players. Sometimes you like a player because you like the person, and that's not yeah. what we're here for anymore. If we want to win, we've got to like the players that are playing well, even if their character isn't what we like. But. I mean, win us a game and we'll fall in love with you anyway, so it's irrelevant. Yeah, 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 100%. I think another shout-out to Michael Walker this year. I think he's stepped up. I think he went... Yeah. When we ended up drafting him, I think a lot of people was like, oh, didn't know much about him, etc. And I think he has stepped up, especially in the last couple of weeks. And I think he will will be a pretty good player in the future and he's just getting better and better for me. It's a bit of a shame. I'm still still really disappointed that we haven't seen Marlon Davidson. I am. um, Who I kind of had really, really high hopes for. Um, But, uh, you know, there's still kind of no explanation about that. I don't know if he's just, you know, if they're just protecting him a little bit. But, you know, maybe he's not up to speed. But, um, kind of terrifying if he's not up to speed to to play you know a couple of snaps in the uh, air. So yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. It's um, I think I I think to your point, you know, seeing Walker, you know, balling the way he's balling is 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 really it's it's really positive. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think just coming back off your your Davidson comment, I I think I think off the top of my head, I had him down for rookie of the year for us as well. Yeah, Can't remember absolutely. if it was him or AJ, but I think I had him down. And like you said, I know he's had injuries, he's had COVID, he's been in and out of like the active roster for all those reasons. But I was expecting much more. I never write him off by any means necessary. No. Absolutely. Way too early for that. And I'd imagine that after a pre following a preseason after this season's finished, he could come in next year and literally earn so. the first so. it's like, you know, it, it's it, it, you've, you've always got to have depth in the roster, but yeah, I don't know, it was just kind of like a second round pick, especially after we took AJ in the first and, and, and everyone was kind of like a bit of an odd choice. I mean, it's worked out really well because I think the kids had a blind and rookie season. Yeah. But then to take him in the second and, you know, you kind of heard the interviews and he was all talking a bit nasty and, you know, yeah. I, I, I like that. You know, I like that from a D-line I do. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm low maintenance now. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? Tell me you're going to hurt somebody and I'm in. I'm all in. Yeah. You know? but, um, <laughs> so... It's... Uh, it's yeah. I just I I, I really I, I'd like to see him before the season ends, but I don't know. I just I, I kind of want an explanation. What what what's going on with him? Like uh, yeah yeah. So just just tossing this out there. DQ was supposed to be this defensive line guru, right? Yeah. But everybody we just named that is showing out that shouldn't have been besides uh, besides like one or two of them are all linebackers secondary. Like yeah. we can name so many defensive line busts at this point. You can name yeah. a Big Beasley. You can name a Tack. You can name even, frankly, a Dante Fowler. Uh, you can, uh, but the one that's actually that stuck out to me just now is Deidre Sanat. Where has that guy been? I know I just, that's they literally question. they literally grabbed him early on and nothing. You know, it, we yeah. we're we're developing these young these later round picks. I mean, Debo was a second round pick. He wasn't like a you know a shiny top ten, no. and he wound up being one of the best middle linebackers in the NFL. Can I um, Where, can I add to that? Yeah, what do you think? Do you think that we need to get rid of our strength and coaching, you know, strength and conditioning coach? Literally every year, <laughs> when, we, when we drop like nineteen guys in one game, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like what's Absolutely. going on? It's like the same injury, or you know, it's plaguing like the, you know, like every, every single year. Now this year, I'm I, the only time I'll ever give him grace. Like you look at. It's around the league. The 49ers yeah, are, yeah. have like 78 guys that are hurt. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're playing. They're like water boy at quarterback at this point. So, like, you know, yeah. we, we and on know, top of but, COVID, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, mean, I mean, you know, people, people, it, it's the weirdest thing, right? We've been screaming, we want a smaller preseason for years. I don't want to get my guys hurt. Let's get them in, get them yeah, in one yeah. time. Well, it, this yeah. year, we didn't have a preseason. Now we're screaming, but we didn't get hit in the preseason. Yeah. So now we're getting hurt. Like, there's no way to win. I, personally, as well, I'm all for preseason because, regardless of quality of football and who plays football, is football, and I just want to watch. Football. And yes. you're looking now at like all the plays we've just mentioned that have come through the draft. They would have been four games ahead of schedule as to where they are now, so they're all starting to show the potential in the last say three or four weeks, whereas they would have been four weeks further ahead of in the development by then because they would have had snaps with the team. And yeah, it's yeah. not going to be with your Matt Ryans and everyone. It'd probably be with your Ben Kurtz and your Shalbs and people like that. But I, I think they needed it. Marlon Davidson's probably the best example. Of I, that. Will, I know he's been injured, but he probably needed snaps early on. I will. I will pay the next 
head coach to send Matt Schaub as far from Atlanta. Oh, please. Oh. <laughs> I don't oh, know what fuck. their love affair with Schaub, like, but I like, think like, that like, he'll be I gone. Really, I don't know if Arthur Blank owes him money. I don't know <laughs> if if maybe Matt Schaub has He some, writes him to Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, That's like, what it I is. don't know if Matt Schaub's got some compromising pictures of somebody. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't get it. But like, like, let's, can we just can we just get like uh, just take take somebody undrafted, anybody? I just yeah. I can't like like if if Matt Ryan and I'm I'm touching wood, the wood of the table. Knocking on wood. Like that, Matt doesn't get hurt ever. But you know, like that that man trotting onto the field in a Falcons jersey just really just makes me go. Oh man! What the fuck? <laughs> like, 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 what, what, what are we doing? I'd, I'd, I'd risk I'd it. Totally agree. I'd, I'd rather the, have the Bronco, the Broncos water boy coming out than that man. So I just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't. Get it. Oh, I, I actually right. agree. What credit, right. uh, credit is due? When Schaub came on last season, he broke records in the one game that he played against the Seahawks. He broke yeah. passing records, yards records, and everything. So That's- he's. That was last year, so he's now. <laughs> yeah. The guy, the, the guy exactly. is now, the the guy is now sixty-four years old. It's time to move on. <laughs> can I? Can I give an interesting, weird route on this? Uh, take oh, his no. shoulder pads away and give the man a clipboard. Let him be the quarterback coach. Let him be a quarterback assistant because that's why they keep him there. It's because he, he, he and Matt Ryan actually have a really great working they relationship. They do. They do. I that, see it that, in the and pictures that's the and everything. Reason that he's mm-hmm. still there. So, fun fact. Stop paying him out of the limited cap space. Yeah, pay him yeah. Out of the coach's yeah. salary, which is a whole other thing. Keep yeah. him on the field, and you know we're good. And then, yeah. uh, then actually, maybe develop a guy like Danny Etling, who I'm never going to forgive them for letting go because he looked great in the preseason. Yeah, I I, I agree. I just think it was a bit of a weird acquisition in the first place when you have Ben Kurtz out there. It's like you have to prioritize and. We'd spent so much time on Benker already. I don't think Etlin ever really had a shot unless. Well, unless, yeah, that. and I think I think going back to to um, Jeff's point earlier on is that you know now is the time, and I know I've been saying it a lot this season, and I've been heading towards. I think we should if if the Jets go and get Dar- uh, go and get um, uh, Lawrence, that Trevor. we should try and try and get Donald because I'm a big Donald fan. You can shake your head all you like. I'm still going for it. It's still my turn. So, um, but I, I just think that now is the time when Matt's going into those kind of thirty foot, like well, how mm-hmm. was it for? We don't now want a uh, Drew Brees situation, you he know. Needs to yeah, think sure. About quarterback development and that future piece, because you know Matt Ryan at 36, 37 isn't going to be able to give a young quarterback what you could give him now. No, so, sure. I stand sure. To that point. Mark, I'm just giving you hell, man. Like in reality, I actually like Sam Darnold, man, uh, man, and, man, and, so and I and I will be a big defender of you can put any quarterback under center for the New York Jets right now, and they are going to be shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. I think I think short uh, short of maybe putting in like year two or three Cam Newton, like and that was only a very specific year when you couldn't hit the man. Yeah, uh, like no, but you. When you have no one to throw it to, when you yeah. have an offensive, when you have an offense that let Le'Veon Bell get two yards a carry, yeah. and when you have uh, an offensive line that honestly are just human turnstiles, like <laughs> yeah. it, it's you know you, you can't do anything. So yeah. uh, I I actually really like Sam Darnold, and he's shown some really really great just improvisational I, I, playmaking. I just think what he's done in that bin fire organization, and now he's going to probably be sitting behind. Lawrence, because the because the Jets will do you know what what I imagine most of that you know bin fire franchises do is they'll just put the new kind of star guy straight in front. Um, and I just think it, it's it's it, he's had a couple of years in the NFL, so you kind of you've already got a base of experience rather than going out with our yeah. you know fifteenth or sixteenth draft pick when all the quarterbacks are gone to settle yeah. for someone who really we don't think is the future i just think it's a better option but oh for sure absolutely 
Uh, personally, I'd love to see him. Like, I like having this conversation. Have a try. I like having this conversation when Tricky's not on because he'll he gives me help. And I'm, <laughs> I'm standing. <Tricky> down. <laughs> no, no, I'd love I'd love to see. I don't think this is the year to chase the quarterback either. Uh, it, it it was when we were looking like the worst team in the league there for a hot second, yeah. and I would I really wanted Trevor Lawrence. I'm to glad you said that. Right. I'm so yeah. glad you said that. It's, everybody yeah. want us to tank. For one no, it's, I, oh, no, I did when it was when Dan Quinn was still here, oh, yeah. and, I, and my and I was literally just falling off the cliff of fandom of just being sad. Like I was like, my God, can we get anything? And even then, I wanted Trevor to sit behind Matt for a couple of years. Yeah, I I, I, I wasn't ready to drop Matt. I just wanted because if you take a guy with that kind of skill set, like an Andrew Luck or better skill set, and let him sit behind Matt for a couple of years, he's going to come out ready to sling it. But that and, makes more sense than just cutting Matt all together. You know, no, you will never, yeah. ever, ever hear me saying that. I will fight people in the streets. That <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, uh, but it, but uh, at the same time, I just if we were good, like I saw a mock draft throw Mac Jones to us from Alabama, and first of all, no, like no, no, no. Uh, I don't trust Alabama quarterbacks to save my life, uh, but. It's just not the year. I see no problem with letting Kurt Benkert back up Matt Ryan for a year and wait and see if we can get a hold of somebody a little stronger. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are quarterbacks kicking around right now. Josh Rosen, who never got a fair chance, by the way, is literally sitting on the Bucks practice squad. I'm not saying I want Josh Rosen. Don't 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 misconstrue. Mark say is hurting me. <laughs> but, but there there are quarterbacks out there that you can get that, you know, can very well run a backup role. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like I said, I just, I feel, I guess I have a soft spot for Rosen because my God, did he get a raw end of the deal? He got dumped into a bad, he got dumped into a bad team. They drafted a better quarterback. He got dumped again. He got dumped again. Now he's sitting like 15 spots behind 48 year old Tom Brady. I mean, you know, it's just sad. (laughs) (laughs) It is real. It is That's no, funny. Me. But Mark, if, if Tricky gives you hell, bring me on. I'll, I'll back oh, you up. I will. On the I, I mean, to be honest with you, I just, I, I just like winding the finger up at this, at this point in time. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's just, it continues to be my kind of hot take, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep shouting about it because I just, I, I think, I, I think it, it makes more sense um, to be thinking about that now than, than to be thinking about it down the line. Is, is, is my, is my only, um, you know, direction on that. A sporter. Right. With, without putting it too short, I'm going to ask for your scoreline predictions and then I think we'll call it a day. I've got dogs that need walking and a missus that won't be very happy with me spending two hours on a live. So. <laughs> and I have a show to follow up on after exactly. this in about an hour. So. <laughs> I've gotten two texts from my wife downstairs going, are you guys still recording? Or are you just yeah, chatting? Yeah. In <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll start with Mark and then we'll work our way up to Maggie and Greg and Cap. And then, oh, uh, yeah. um, I'm going to go... Um, 34 oh, I was gonna say, well, okay, 30, okay, 34 28. I think, I think it'll be a one score game. Falcons, um, yeah, you think we're gonna score? I, I always Falcons predict that we win weekend. because I it, 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 it's nice to live in a positive world, Danny. It <laughs> is <laughs> that's absolutely your problem. Um, yeah. but, um, 34-28 I, I think it's going to be a close game but um, I, I think that the D's going to turn up this week and be better and um, yeah like I say I fancy, I fancy Julio for two okay I'll take that Maggie you know what he kind of went what I was thinking because it's going to be a very very close game to the point where it's going to take a kick I feel oh, Mr. Oh. MVP I mean come on it's going to be tough it's going to be seven. tough <laughs> so I, I was actually my score was gonna be similar to what his was so you know i'm seeing us win this one okay great mm-hmm. 23 17 us i say uh i say ku gets three field goals because of course he is uh okay. i already i already said that Edo is gonna get two touchdowns so i'm gonna give him that uh i'll uh maybe matt will sling him one i'm not sure but uh i i don't uh, I just I refuse to think that Taysom Hill is going to beat us twice. Like, <laughs> stay on top of the slant, King. You'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Cal, what you back in? Yeah, I'm going to go 24, 21. Um, could you get the last three points? That, um, oh, that'd be tasty. Final kick of the game. <laughs> 
I would. 50, it's going to be like a 58 yarder, though. Imagine that. Imagine the scenes of that. <laughs> the, the, the scenes because everybody doubted his long kicking ability when, exactly. when we were like, Oh, that's right. They, 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 better, better, they better leave that roof closed, is all I'm saying. Like, if you, if you bring in any kind of wind and you start messing with my boy, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> close that roof. That, that, that no over 50 yards stories were dead and buried now. I think he topped two. Like, did he get two last year anyway, near the end of the season? Uh, all I remember oh, from like, last year is the onside kicks. Or, or they might have been, uh, yeah, well, yeah, all the onside kicks. But this year, that's just absolutely obliterated it. So I was going to go 24 21 as well, but I wasn't going for a, a last kick of the game. I'll, I'll go for the we'll get three points from our first drive because that always fucking happens. We get a 60 yard pass or something and then we hit a brick wall and end up kicking it. So I'll start. We're, first, we're first and goal on the inch and we will kick a 30 yard field goal. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, every time. But no, um, I think we'll wrap it up here because obviously we've all got things to do. Maggie's got to show us up. So. Yep. Thank you all for coming Maggie, on. It was uh, awesome meeting you. Thank, thank you. you it's awesome. Always. I've been trying to catch you guys. So I was like, let me, I'm yeah. up anyway, getting prepared for my show. I just seen the notification. I was, I was like, let me. <laughs> let me jump on here real quick. <laughs> Absolutely. No, thank so you appreciate you having me. Yeah. We'll definitely oh, jump on yours at some point when we get the opportunity. Uh, thank you everyone for watching and all of the guests that came on and out on and off as the show went on so uh, let's hope that tomorrow goes well we'll get a win and hopefully we'll probably do a show on Sunday or well maybe Sunday night if Carl's feeling brave but maybe Monday evening if not so we'll see how it goes thank you everyone <laughs> thanks everybody that's awesome <laughs> right thank you all see you later everyone thank you, thank you all for watching